you win. You, Greg absolutely wins. He's quickest on the draw. This has been a nightmare. Power went out. Thunderstorm here. Heart de, here's Mr. Simpson. And it's opened up in a different way for me as well. It's very strange. And it's, oh, look, the gang's nearly all here. We're nearly How's your disaster management going there, Gary? Come on, Gary. Well, in terms of managing it, <laughs> not so well. He's in the catastrophe <laughs> principle. <laughs> there should be some live chat here somewhere as well. Um, I should, uh, you guys should get that link too. I was imagining hailstorm balls coming down on top of your house. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was. Hang on, let's get the live chat for everyone. There was, uh, there was no collision, co collision avoidance for the for the thunderstorm. <laughs> uh, it's 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 that time of year here, right? I'm, for our chaps, I'm going to put the live chat. Thank you for those of you that have, that came along. But I, I think, yeah, normally, normally when this happens, um, it lets the others keep speaking and I disappear. But I don't know why it shut down. We that were last speaking. One. We were, but you weren't. But you weren't live, were you? Did it? Yeah, did it, it took live off. Live, live went away about a couple of minutes after yeah. after you left. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe in the past I've always dropped in and out. Oh, anyway, right. So, um, did you did did you miss me? No. No. It was actually going a lot better without you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was. So, where did we get to? Had 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 you solved that helicopter problem? Have you resolved that? More or less. Yeah, just forbid every everything from flying. Well, you know, as I say, no GA, no GA below two K. That's what I say. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's bad. It's bad news that thing. And I, I personally, I hope, I hope it is a fake video, just because it'd be better if it is. But I don't think it is. Uh, but uh, it would be much better if it was. And if it is a fake video, they must charge that person uh, for putting that up. I don't. I don't believe it is. It is a fake. Uh, no, I know. But um, we did raise an interesting issue with the guys from New York, though, about the, the, the split that's forming between the recreational and the commercial aspects of the drone yeah. community. Uh, now okay. this personifies it. So apologies, John had to take off for a meeting, but well, Sassi and I are going to be here to the end of it. <laughs> so what's uh, the division then? Go, unpack that division a bit more then. Well, the division <laughs> is uh, uh, obvious users most, most of the time don't even care or know the drone regulations and, and or the aviation regulations, period. But haven't, haven't, haven't we got to define the sort of hobbyist user? I think your AMA, BMFA model flyers, they do know and they do care. Um, yeah, the, 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 the hobbyist user is the guy that goes at uh, Walmart and picks up a drone. Uh, are we no, giving a recreational them, user? The yeah, hobbyist give, is someone who's more dedicated. Are we okay. giving them, say, too much of a title there, really? Because they, they're here today, gone tomorrow. They're not, they're not suitably invested in all this sort of thing, are they? They don't care. They I'm just sure they, how much they, obvious guys have moved away from their actual building things and have just gone to the, the out of the box flyer drone type deal. I mean, is the is the hobbyist a dying breed now, or are we left with recreational and commercial and nothing in between? No, I think that they've simply just because someone's got a ready to fly drone doesn't mean they're no longer a hobbyist. I mean, I used. I mean, I'm not sure in the background, actually. The drone you've got in the background there actually looks like a Vulcan frame. Um, it is. I, it is, is it? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. I built one of my, my second ever drone was a, a, a Vulcan. So, you know, I used to build stuff like that. And I simply, you to you, you to drive it right around in a bloody Land Rover to take it from A to B. You know, I couldn't jump in a taxi with that. I've been in a backpack. So part of the reason they have a ready to fly now is just because it's smaller and it's convenient and it can be just part of your normal carrying around so I, I don't think that's changed the type of user or people's attitude i mean sometimes the argument's made but it, it's nonsense um i think it's just the fact that you've had more people coming into the um into the hobby you know just being a just i think the scene obviously jones on the news and that i'm just thinking i'm going to get involved in that um without um consideration i think when you build something there's probably some truth to the fact that you're more invested in it you know when you spent all those hours on it and that comes out of the sky and crashes into pieces that really really hurts not just because of the money it's all that time and obviously if you just got bought something off the shelf 
you, you haven't quite got that connection with it. So maybe there's a there's a little bit there, but fundamentally i think and i've mentioned this before i think youtube's the problem and it's monetization and it's this narcissist culture of people showing off and it allows them to show off and, and showing off to get money in the pocket and if you stop that you would stop uh 95 of all the drone misbehavior we see overnight well that's good it's because bad. what you're saying Ian, is that all all the all the incidents that are happening are going on youtube so there's nothing no one's doing it unless they're doing it for money, which means we've seen everything that is happening and it's not much. Yeah, well, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. You can always apply that argument. But that 407 incident was jolly close. And um, Louis uh, said just before we came on air, uh, good day to um, James. Uh, I see your 249 comment and three, uh, the ADSB thing. I don't think we need ADSB, but that's another story. Um, Where's I going now? Oh, uh, in Portugal, there's an incident. Was it today, Louis? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> it was was it today? Louis talked no, about that. And the thing I'm, is, I'm he's here. apparently a commercial operator. Uh, apparently, oh. it was a professional photographer, which does not mean he's a commercial operator, that was doing some kind of real estate work. And he claims that the drone flew away and flew away un and unfortunately landed in the middle of the main runway of the Lisbon airport. So the airport was closed for a few minutes and the guy was identified 24 hours later and now he's at home in house arrest. So he's subject to a penalty of 10 years because oh. he interfered with the... With, uh, with um, com uh, it's, it is considered um, a, a traffic, uh, very severe traffic violation that can endanger lots of people. So if the penalties are quite high, it's even above what the regular drone uh, uh, penalties are. So I believe, and from the, the looks of it, the this will be an exemplary case, uh, 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 case study that the authorities will try to do with him. I'm sorry for the guy, but um, he should have known better. What drone was it? What? What kind of drone? Do you know the man? No, 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 no. Don't know if it was a DJI, if that is your question. Uh, well, no, because... yeah. I was just kind of thinking about whether you never know with these things and obviously it'll come out in the wash whether it was being silly or if it genuinely did have a malfunction because one problem we're getting these days with some of the newer drones i think it started on the uh, mavic um is the disabling manual mode because obviously if you have a compass problem or you have a gps problem it's going to fly off and normally all you do is you switch to at it take control not a problem but now that that, that feature's been taken, and then Go, GoPro as well went down that line of actually taking the feature off. So if you have a malfunction, you can just you just sit there and watch it and you can't do much about it. Uh, the thing is that that area uh, and a few kilometers uh, around that area is a red zone from on the DJI app. So on the DJI, you couldn't fly there, period. The drone won't even take off. I saw yeah. someone just last week do the old tinfoil modification to yeah. get flying in one of those red zones. That, that's not gone away, that modification. No. Oh, oh, the hacks. The thing, though, as well. if, the guy was, if the guy was flying professionally and taking pictures for money, he was a commercial operator, whether he admits it or classifies himself that or not. He's commercial. Good sign. Well, What's the tinfoil mod we're talking about here? Just point out uh, over the GPS. <laughs> well, I'm afraid we, uh, if you don't know, then why are you We even don't know. <laughs> it's something that we heard on, on the internet. <laughs> yes, it was we heard some of stuff and somebody, Bruce told me about it. <laughs> even I know about that, and I'm, I'm an ecologist. <laughs> <laughs> Which part of Europe are you from then? Oh, no, that's something different, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, well, so I saw one announcement like DJI is going to make these uh, geofencing for enterprise user. I don't know how much of it is true, but if that is going to happen, yeah, then that gives some kind of uh, flexibility for this enterprise user. But uh, still, I think that hobbyists will be in the gray zone. Like they won't be able to fly in this red zone. What all these so we. So two weeks ago, we were so we were flying in the TFR, and through the DJI app, you can then apply to unlock your drone. 
Um, and we did that, uh, and it worked for most of the drones. Some of them didn't unlock. Um, and that, but then we also had to re repeatedly do it. We had to do it every day to in order to unlock it. It just expires after a certain amount of time. And we are only considering that it was a DJI because it could be something else. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest problem. Uh, how uh, will the, the open source uh, stacks handle the, the issue of the no-fly zones? And uh, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, at Hardo Pilot, uh, we are uh, handling this with dynamic fly zones, and and it's being actively developed by uh, the project leader and the Trigel that will be able and will be able to have um, dynamic no fly zones uh, that can be. Um, enabled by the drone itself or by a ground control station that will send the, the dynamic no-fly zones to the drone. That is something that an open source project is actively developing and would be a, a good way to, to avoid certain problems like like this. But not, not everyone uses Ardu Pilot, so that is uh, another issue. Yeah, I mean, I think I genuinely would think it's less likely to be RG Pilot for the for the reason, and this is one of my gripes. My only gripe with RG Pilot is a lack of decent, and you know, for, especially for smaller cameras, uh, decent and affordable gimbals with a with a good degree of control. So a lot of the people that are doing your flying about doing video work wouldn't be using RG Pilot anyway, just because of the g general hassles around sorting out the uh, uh, gimbal. I mean that's one way. That's the one area where DJI just are really ahead of everyone and still are. Yeah, but DJI also owns a, a camera company like Hasselblad, so they they are not no longer a drone company. They're a camera manufacturer that uses drones to to fly cameras. I still see Hasselblad mainly as as branding. I think I've, if you're looking at, but as we said before, it, it's Sony. Hasselblad even had entire cameras. That were just a badge Sony, so I still think there's a lot of that. We've got so much R and D out of it, but I still think a lot of the tech will still be bought in. But it's a good for a brand anyway. It's a very good brand to have. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I, I, we know uh, guys that bought the the Hasselblad model of the big drone, so it's quite expensive, and apparently the results are uh, on par with the price, but. That's not all, all uh, issues with the, with the cameras. Uh, DJI is the main culprit. Come on, the, they have seventy percent or eighty percent of the market, so the most likely culprit will be that. And then we have the new uh, commercial entities like uh, Parrot uh, with the Anafi, because taking those two, who else? Uh, we have we have Unique and there's Altair uh, as well, and Hotel. So, but um, I believe in order of uh, of size would be DJI, Parrot, uh, Unique, and Hotel. Um, anyone? I'm sorry, sorry, Lou, but I, I just wanted to. Sort of, a lot of this doesn't come down to the, the actual make. It doesn't really matter who makes the platform. It's the attitude of the operator yeah. that's causing the issues. Uh, yes, DJI are big, but it's not necessarily DJI's. You might argue that they should lock down the geofencing a little bit more and they should have more accurate uh, geofencing. Um, but it's the attitude of the operator and that's that's what has to change. So is the only thing that's going to really work is out there is a really big stick that gets into the Daily Mirror mail or whatever it's called all the time? Or will people still ignore that? Uh, in Portugal, I believe, like I told before, uh, I said before, uh, this case will be, I, I'm sure of it, they'll make a, an example, uh, example of this. Uh, and the guy, who, I'm sorry for him, because he should have known better. Uh, if it was a malfunction, sorry for him too, but mm. something, something bad always happens. <laughs> and Louis, take away something bad always happens. Living there on the bright side of life. <laughs> <laughs> given how many of these incidents occur around airports, I think we should keep aircraft oh, well. Gary's clear. going away. Oh. And he's oh no. He's back. 
Ahoj. 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 I mean, yeah. one, one thing that gets me with the, the airport thing, and we'll, and we'll see this in, in the UK, is whilst, whilst we're making laws saying drone pilots shouldn't fly near airports, which is quite correct. I mean, if I look at my local airport, it's Leeds Bradford. There's always photographers there every day taking photographs of the plane. If there was a drone ev- anywhere near that, someone would get a photo of it because they know they could fog it for the, to the Daily Mail and make up, you know, hundreds of pounds off it. And yet you never see any photos. You never hear of any incidents there. Um, you hear of them mainly down in London, and the reason for that is because London is a tourist city. People are coming across as tourists with the cameras and with the drones. They fly the drones up. So even if we crack down the laws here, and whatever country it is, if we crack down the laws, even in Portugal you crack down it, you're still going to have the tourists coming in and uh, breaking the law anyway, which is, well, which yeah, is something but, that's never dealt with. And that brings up the, the other topics, um, um uh, Ash is mentioning that uh, registration drones is pointless and about power ramping up and down. I believe in, um, we should have got Kevin on to ask, but I believe in the firmware there's actually, uh, in, in allegedly, there's uh, settings which say illegal <laughs> illegal bans and all that sort of thing. <laughs> it's clearly written in plain English in, in the firmware is apparently what the radio schema for the devices are. And that is, is one of the... Um, one one of the issues um because yes at the end of the day having something that you advertise a seven kilometer range well where's that legal anywhere <laughs> it's it's not um yeah we cannot avoid these drones or we cannot avoid these pilots but what we can do is like we can mitigate all these things you know so all these critical infrastructure we might have some kind of mitigation plan so this capturing net capturing thing or some kind of uh, kind of giving an electrical pulse or something, disabling the drone. Yeah, that is the only way to kind of save this critical infrastructure with these kind of drones and the pilots. And there are other possibilities, but uh, the companies, the industry need to uh, make plans like that. They can, yeah, if they want to enable something, they can go for it, but uh, that will kind of dull their business. So probably they won't be doing that real quick. So, but the best way is to just mitigate all these things. And there are a lot of companies that as a business like there are a lot of pro mitigation companies they're just putting all this radar antenna just next to their critical infrastructure and just shooting the drone and in europe they are also having these eagles to go capture the drones so and that is another industry in the same line we, so, no, you're you're still, absolutely. Go on, Bruce. this is like in america you cannot buy a bump stock for a gun because it's illegal because you can kill people with it <clears throat> you can't buy certain types of like assault rifles in california and that sort of thing because the the, the, the legislators have deemed this is too dangerous you, you can sell a drone that will fly seven miles away or seven kilometers away even though that is illegal so why is there no parity between the gun laws and the drone laws why are you allowed to sell a drone that will let you commit an illegal act but you can't buy a gun of a certain category like that so why don't they align these things and say okay you cannot buy a store-bought drone that will fly more than 500 meters from the from the pilot and then it's always going to be in line of sight because that helicopter thing in in florida that was a beyond line of sight thing a lot of these things are beyond line of sight things simplest solution in the world is to say dji if you do not limit your drones to fly no more than 500 meters from the pilot as you do limit them to fly around airfields and things then you cannot sell them here yeah, I, I believe that, that. I think I think that meeting has been had a couple of times. I believe the UK had that meeting with them about other things. Um, I think the comparison uh, to to cars is more apt for for drones because you know the, the gun issue is a whole uh, emotional one that people get wrapped up in. They can go around the maypole five times and not come out with any answers. The the car one, however, is a little more uh, accurate for drones because we're having now autonomous cars. So we're, we're going to have to accept a certain amount of death that comes with driving these or riding in these if they're automated. But apparently that's not okay, even though manned vehicles driving kills far more. <laughs> and we're totally fine with that. Yeah. It all comes to liability. Like uh, in a manned car, like uh, if you crash into something, yeah, then you are the liable. Kind of, you kind of have to take responsibility. But in ca- case of autonomy, yeah, that is this kind of serious problem with the science of autonomy. Like uh, people don't have the kind of acceptance towards autonomy. Still, a lot of use cases need to be uh, kind of proving that 
this autonomous drones are safe. Yeah, and yeah, companies and industries, academia, everything is working towards this autonomy. So at one point, yeah, all these things will get the uh, trustworthy from the public. Uh, see, autonomous stuffs are like, okay, we are, we are okay with that one. So we have to, yeah, this, that's a kind of a curve and we are just trying, trying to kind of climb the ladder. I think you're right. I think as as uh, more people are rescued, there's been quite a few rescue uh, uh, stories recently and other positive use cases. And I just see I'm trying to go, I'm trying to be like a DJ, going to try and <laughs> try and go great here. But I think as um, as things are, are more accepted, then uh, as as more positive things happen, then things are going to get better. I was going to mention uh, radio, radio James mentions uh, spectrum. That is super important. We don't have protected spectrum. That's absolutely important. And that is, a, that is going to be a bigger limiting factor for BV loss flight than, than anything else. Uh, and when, what's the new aircraft carrying England? HMS Queen Elizabeth, is it the big new? Anyway, one of the new ones that's been built when that went into Portsmouth. So the chap landed on the deck in scotland of the thing when it was uh being built but when it went into portsmouth you try and find a close-up drone video of that and i've heard there was quite a few mitigation devices <laughs> used in that case and it was very very successful indeed um uh, once it had the aircraft on it and stuff like that so yeah there are ways around all of this so let's go hms <laughs> yeah that's 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 what it is oh i've got a i've got a show droning on i've got a i've had your comment was held for a review but yes <laughs> it's there now um greg now you, you you're in that you're in that positive use case and I'm trying I was, to be i was in i was in the, i was very flippant in saying that you've got a simple and obvious idea and but I, at the same time i really admire it and and all the best ideas i think happen uh, are simple and obvious but only once you've seen them and someone's pointed it out um can you just unpack your and see what our, our audience of international experts in the comments think of this what is your simple idea for data and why did you need it sure so here i'll paste in the chat so um I was so for some reason I'm the guy that local uh, law enforcement and fire call when they need like a data analyst to go into emergencies. So that started with um, uh, some consulting on the ghost ship fire, which was a nightclub that burned in Oakland and killed uh, about 30 uh, college kids um, last year in October. Then that was the Santa Rosa fires that came in and burned about 5,000 homes almost overnight. Um, and, and about 30 people killed. Um, and then recently it was the car fire, uh, which is one of three major wildfires burning um, in California right now, burned about a thousand homes out of Redding um, with about seven people killed uh, to date. Um, and so they brought me in to coordinate the teams. Uh, and so I didn't fly at all. Like I'm not, I, I can fly, but th it was mostly coordinating law enforcement and fire teams uh, who had an emergency waiver from the FAA to fly within the TFR of CAL FIRE. And so that was coordinating with the, with the CAL FIRE teams. So over two days, we built that map that I shared the link on, um, and I did the write-up in SUAS News. Um, and it was exhausting and stressful, and I drank a lot of coffee. And afterwards, I was invited to go to the fairgrounds um, to see CAL FIRE's operations. And there was about five or 6,000 people at the fairgrounds, and it's a whole city. Uh, and they have four GIS trailers that are pretty amazing with printers. They print these giant, like, 13-foot maps of the fire every single day. Uh, and some of that da those data are coming from Scan Eagles and, and flying the fire at night uh, from the Air National Guard. Um, a lot of it is coming from forward observers. So people that walk around with handheld GPSs and in really steep terrain, this is about um, a mile, you know, two kilometers an hour or so, a mile per hour to walk this and trace the lines, um, both fire lines, bulldozer lines and, and burned lines. Um, and when I heard this, I was pretty, that sounded like a terrible job to me because it's you know, 30 degrees centigrade out or 100 degrees out, it's super hot, it's really smoky. The walking around with the GPS um, didn't sound pleasant. And so I had been experimenting with um, 
a new method, a method of flying and syncing your video with your flight line. And so there's a software out there called Survey, S-U-R-V-A-E. Um, and what it will do is it just takes the video and where the video started and stopped and puts that flight line on a map. And then you can see the footage. And so you can see the drone moving on the map and the footage as it's playing. So my thought, the problem with that is that like we had really crappy internet. And so shooting in 4K was like a major mistake because now I have two gigs of video to upload. And really all I needed was like that flight line. Um, and so I, I called them and had them built an export KML function so that I could just export that, that, um, that flight line as a KML to put on Google Maps. And that brought up this whole idea of like, well, these guys are walking like lines with GPSs. What if we could just use the drone as a flying GPS and we could partition the flight logs? And I don't know if I can drag in here. Let me see if I can do this. Um, I don't think I can attach anything, but I was using Lychee and, you know, with Lychee, it, it trans, the app translates the flight log uh, or, or um, decrypts it um, from DJI. And you can see it's very super intuitive Excel file or CSV file. So the idea is like, why don't we just map by partitioning the flight log um, in, and then we can get all the data down to just like a megabyte or so. So that was kind of the idea of, of this video that I put out of, of one megabyte mapping was, hey, we can real time, we can fly over and draw lines and different shapes and we can use altitude and all these different ways to categorize our flight logs into um, basically cartography and, and maps. And we still need to test like how accurate is this? I know that you're off by a couple of meters and if you're flying at different heights, maybe you're off a little bit more, but in these kind of situations, like being off by a couple of meters, like who cares? You know, even if you're tens of meters, Sometimes that doesn't matter if you're if you're in an emergency. So that was kind of the idea. It was kind. Of, I was a little bit embarrassed to put it out because I felt like, look, guys, like this isn't obviously other people must have thought of this, but I felt like, look, this is important at least to ten guys and girls walking lines with GPSs in the state of California and fires right now. So maybe it would be important to other people as well. So that that was kind of the idea, mapping with flight logs. Forget yeah. the imagery, map yeah. with flight logs. Well, you, well, or just drawing lines on a map that represents something that's happening in an emergency situation now is really what yeah, we're doing. Totally. This, this, totally. this, this road's open, this road's closed, that yeah. house is, I, I immediately I could see a language of symbols or something, uh, or even automated, you know, fly, yeah, the hexagon, totally. fly the hexagon over this house, the oval over this, the whatever yeah. over this. And, yeah, uh, there's no reason it has to be manual, you know, and it's it's basically just passed through the telemetry or or um, um, my my other thought was like, okay, you could even like incorporate voice to text and include that text of what you're of what you're narrating within the flight log as well. So like you could partition it any sort of way, but in in San Francisco, if there is an earthquake tomorrow, I would really like someone to take a Mavic up and trace the route out, you know, the, the evacuation route out and have that texted to everybody in seven minutes. I mean, that would be great. And not to, I don't need the video of it. I just need the map. So yeah. that's Sounds the like idea. Drones for disasters. Yeah. What's that? Sounds almost like ways for drones with disasters. Yeah, and I and I reached out to um, to Patrick Meyer and the and the Humanitarian Drone Network. I mean, I felt like it was one of those things that look here. Let's give this to the to the guys who uh, or the people that think about it the most and and let them run with it. I mean, that's not you know I train people how to map vineyards, and so <laughs> it's it's like not my uh, not what I wanted. I don't want to go start an app company. I just want people to know, hey. Before we start thinking about transformative technology, which is think or transformative solutions, let's think about incremental solutions and all the things we forgot along the way. Um, that's not augmented reality and not going to get you funded by venture capital, but is something you can do today. And partitioning the flight log is something you can do. Essentially, it turns an FPV racer into a, cartog a cartographer. And somebody told me you. Had some, Gary, you had some race where you had people spell out like 3D robotics or something like that? Yes. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. That, so that, it's that, the same yeah. idea. It's just you cut, you crop out all the extra stuff like the takeoff and the landing. It's only really when you trigger uh, the video camera is, is where you're getting that flight log recorded, so. 
yeah it's it, yeah i just thought it was so be beautifully simple and obvious and i i can't think of an example of anybody uh, the, i can't think of software that does this i think you have had a genuinely new idea that is bloody obvious <laughs> <laughs> One, as, soon another, as, you see it, as soon as you see it, it's obvious. It's but I obvious. Seen it. So I also called Air Data. Air Data is like associated with Leachy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know any of these guys. But in like by the next morning, they had an export media file as KF as KML as well, and they have a way to sync multiple pilots in. So you could have lots of pilots streaming live telemetry and syncing it in, but you're just exporting by media. You know, media only KML. That's like all I want from the flight log. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so no, it's super it, easy. Like two companies built it in like three hours. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It um, it will. Yeah, it, well, and, and well, the, the thing is, you're doing it from genuine experience, aren't you? You are on the ground in an emergency situations that need it, and very often things are built in Silicon Valley with people. Well, you, that actually, <laughs> that's your main point of work <laughs> isn't it it's <laughs> but it's like but look if i went to, if i go to Wait drone deploy or somebody and tell them yeah, like if i sat down with you know some venture capitalists and say hey i would like to make keep the drone smart but i want the data to be to be really stupid and here's how stupid i want it that anybody could re replicate this uh within a day nobody's going to be interested in that you know it's too simple so mm -hmm. I believe it's the, the the correct case of saying someone that knows what he's doing and uh, just uses another tool. The, the drone for you is just another tool. So you know what you're doing, you know what you want, and use the appropriate tools for that. Yeah, and I'll be using it in agriculture as another case where like internet is spotty and like we could go out there and scout a field and I can just use the drone as a tracer tool to highlight the problem areas or drop pins and I don't need to necessarily send them the photos. I can just send them the KML file and they know, you know, here's the delineation lines of their soil type and here's other things that I saw out there. So it's, it's just a complimentary uh, thing. You don't have to get rid of your mapping and your 3d models. So you just use, know that in worst case scenarios, use the flight log. No, I, I thought it was a cracking idea. It was a really, really cracking idea. And so well done you. <laughs> well done you indeed. And and no Bruce Chain involved. No Bruce Chain at all. There was another blockchain drone thing this week. I, I didn't bother putting it in and I can't remember what it was, but that, that was a marvelous thing that was gonna save us all. Um I was oh, oh that's why it's a Russian company with a uh, that I I will I will try and put it in. It's a fabulous multi rotor. Uh, that is a fabulous rendering um, that definitely needs to go in at some stage. Um, but let's talk to Ian. Now, did you guys talk to Ian about um, SOS? Did, did, we, did that conversation come up while I was away? No. Well, over to you then. How's it going? Have, have you saved everybody yet? Do you have any reaction in the UK? Yeah, yeah there's, been, there's been lots of reaction. Um, yes, it's, it, there's been a few internet <laughs> arguments. Um, yeah, just basically just following on from the chats we've had over the, the last few weeks with the new proposed laws in the UK and the fact there's a consultation. Um, there just weren't, well, there still isn't enough people getting involved with it, judging by um, what we're seeing, you know, on, on Facebook and whatever. People just don't seem that um, captivated so far. People just think it's not going to affect me, uh, a bit apathetic to it. So the idea was to try and do some videos to at least get people thinking actually maybe i ought to get involved so we've got a a, a hashtag for it as well which i've printed out somewhere oh here we go as, a, as always just lo-fi with that paper uh, is that right yeah save our sky basically is the hashtag um and yes we've done a, a couple of videos so approach people um in the the uk industry so some PFCO pilots and trainers, and one of them is a retailer as well at Quadcopters. And um, yeah, reached out to Colin Gwynn in the US as well, because I thought it'd be nice to have a known, it's nice to have an international person looking at it as well, looking at the UK and say, you know, what the hell are you guys up to? Um, it, it just gets people thinking a bit more, and I think <clears throat> having a, a recognized face there as well. So, and, and even just for a bit of comedy value, I approached a, a an American comedian 
that does voiceovers and he's been in like Family Guy and he did the voiceover in the style of Sir Ian McKellen. So I just thought that gave it a little bit of a gravitas. Um, but I'd certainly encourage anyone else that's got a uh, YouTube channel with following, um, if they'll do a little piece on the UK laws and use that hashtag, and then we can sort of get a bit of momentum up and, and try and encourage people. I think especially the hobbyists. And the hobbyists um, don't realise really what a problem this is going to be to their lives. And the hobbyists now, and obviously I'm talking about the, the responsible hobbyists, you know, they're going to be the PFCO pilots of the future. Um, and if we stop them ever, you know, getting into drones, that's not going to happen. Um, I think where I was going to go with this, uh, go and ask me another question. Well, I think, um, and I see, I see comments are happening there. I, I think, all right, my, just call me out on this, guys, if I'm wrong. But I think what's happening and what's happening in Australia as well is, is regulators in the UK and Australia have been quite good so far. They've been the aviation authorities and, and they've been quite reasonable and it's gone quite well. But unfortunately, what's happened in both countries is politicians have got hold of the idea. It's now a popular thing to run up the flagpole to let's have some more regulation. And it's going over the top of, of the actual regulators. I mean, Bruce, you might know more about what's happening in Australia than I do, but I know there's some pretty bad stuff being proposed there which is completely left field for what what their civil aviation authority had on the books um and i think that's happening there as well um and i get wound up about the 18 year old thing i just go i worry that 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 this is the, the the thin end of the wedge and other stuff will get pulled into it and it's being driven by politicians who are being backed by the delivery drone people and other other large entities that are really want to have uh, that that first 400 foot of airspace, uh, that valueless airspace uh, until now. It's suddenly acquired value. I'll have a rant. Anyway, I'll just tell I'm completely wrong. Rant ends. Oh, I want to jump in with that, actually, because you, you reminded me where I was going. That's just good. Um, yeah, there was, um, funny enough, the, the, this sort of debate was uh, going on um, uh, this evening. And a, a guy jumped in and said, because we were talking about uh, Balpa, because Balpa, the, the British Airline Pilots Union, uh, have been told that they've to complete this consultation as well. And obviously all the airline pilots are going to go, bam, 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 please, you're this. Um, and, and uh, yeah, someone posted, oh, we, we, we shouldn't be us and them with the pilots. They're, they're there to do us a favour. And I'm like, well, they're not there to do us a favour because we've seen with the uh, study where the, did a four kilogram harpoon and then tried to pass it off to the press as being a consumer journal. I said, if they're our friends, frankly, we don't need any enemies. Um, well, the guy came back and said, well, th they've got to be on our side. And he said this, and, and if this is true, it's quite concerning. But he said that three of the board members of, uh, on, on the committee at Balpa uh, have owner or are involved with NQEs that do the training for drones. Now, if you're involved in an NQA that does, NQE that does training for drones and you're getting 500 to 1,000 pounds per person you train for drones, you can't be in this impartially. You're going to say, ban drones, restrict them, stop the hobbyists, and then they all have to go the commercial route and pay money to those companies. To me, there's, if, if they're advising government, it's something there that they actually need looking at. That's, that's a real vested interest. So that's... That yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Well, there is. Um, Ash is saying, and joining on and sending the comments that we're ignoring him. Sorry if we're ignoring you, Ash. Um, well, we'll have to have you on next week when you're back from your holiday, and then you you can you can unpack your sort of uh, where where your viewpoint lies. I just I just worried that lots of regulations are going to be put in place for services that will fail. A lot of the delivery drones services high in the sky stuff will fail there's lots of stuff that will happen at low like uh, adam's drop copter lots of stuff will happen hopefully not i'm for the bees but no drop copter is needed uh, but lots of stuff like that will happen and will be needed but there are ways to mitigate uh, this issue and the the age thing is um is always oh, there for work so <laughs> we should work in holiday um Oh, I'm ranting, uh, Bruce. Oh, someone I'll, rescue I'll me. Think, I've Go got on. another. I've got another worry that, that that's come out more this week. We're looking into it um, because we're talking about 
um, the police giving powers and PCSOs that are uh, kind of trainee police, and then we've got council wardens. Uh, I'm very concerned because at the moment, even your commercial operators, they all argue every week, could I do this job, can't I? You know, someone says, well, I'm actually 40 metres away, but there's a wall in between. So that's kind of like me being caged anyway. Surely I can do it. And people say, yeah, you can do it. And But if you if, if someone then was looking at that as the letter of the law, it's no, you can't do it. So I, I foresee that there will be issues regardless. Um, but the concerning thing is with councils now, um, Newcastle Council has now banned, it's actually done it some time ago, but they've, they've banned drones from their land outright, including commercial use. They've banned overflight of highway. So if you think, if you live in Newcastle, the 150 metres rule now, you, you can't fly around your own house, you can't fly around a residential area, you, you can't fly, fly on private property unless someone's given you permission, which generally they won't do. Um, if you can't fly in council land, you know, and, and any other green lands normally uh, National Trust and you can't fly there, you literally cannot fly anywhere. So if anyone's flying in Newcastle and these laws come in, then you can be hit with a £300 fine by any of those bodies because you are technically breaking the law. Because uh, you could say, although you're not breaking the air navigation order laws necessarily, you'll be breaking a bylaw, but that's still a law. And if, especially if that's a council warden, he's going to be enforcing council law as well as what he's thinking about national law. Um, Leicester has banned all hobby flying as well. Um, it's got some restrictions around commercial, but there is some common sense there. Leeds um, only has one square mile of land. It's one part in the entire of Leeds that you're allowed as a hobbyist to fly on. And people just don't know this yet because it's not being enforced. But at the moment, this can be enforced. We've effectively banned hobby flying from at least three major UK cities. But so then is that going to expand? You know, what's the impact of that be? Has anyone even thought about it? And um, do they have sorry. the right to ban? I mean, I thought CAA controlled airspace. I don't think councils had a right to control airspace. So how can the council stop you from overflying a piece of land? Well, they, they control the land. So if, if you literally can't take off or land on any land without breaking the law, then you're stuck to start with. So there's, there's that. But yeah, some some are saying that actual overflight. We're considering we're putting a bylaw in that says that is breaking our laws. So the council will say, well, you've not broken there, no, but you've broken the bylaw. So someone will have to take that to court. But you know, is is someone going to have the money to fight that in court against? against yeah, it, it's a case of having to go to court on that one because you know, you, if they're operating outside their jurisdiction, then that needs to be called and they need to be put in their place because. That, that's the whole thing. If you then have councils making laws and CAA making laws, what happens when they conflict? I mean, you, this is what's happening in the USA. The FAA said we are the sole administrator of the airspace, but you've got local states trying to make laws to control the airspace, and now all hell's breaking loose because you've got state law and local law conflicting with FAA law. And the FAA just came out and made a very firm statement saying we are the only ones who make the rules for the airspace. And I think that needs to be done in the UK as well then. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is going to be that the, the first we'll, we'll, we'll experience this is someone will be flying the drone, get pulled up, and they'll be told, no, you can't fly. They'll go, yeah, you can, because I'm, I'm I'm keeping to the national air laws. And then they're like, no, no, we're not keeping to our bylaws. We'll call a police officer, we'll confiscate your gear, uh, and they'll just end up going through that fight. So, so unfortunately, some suckers going to have to go through that, and hopefully at the end of that we'll get some common sense. Um, congested areas are being mentioned in the uh, comments. It's a very fair point about flying in a congested area. Um, but I think you, you might have council land that would be outside of a congested area. It might not necessarily yeah. be in the very centre of town. Yeah, and, it, but, and even that argument, though, is, is, is should be up for debate. Because in America, we don't you don't have 150 metres or 50 metres. It's down to the, uh, as I understand it, you've got the 107 and that. It's, it's down to... Uh, what the pilot deems to be safe but 150 meters with a mavic if you if you if we're looking at this as scientifically and for risk there is no justification for it you know that, as i mentioned at the start when i was building my first drone it, it was a vulcan mantis and it was huge it was you know it's massive and no one even batted an eyelid and now you, you've got a tiny little mavic the, the risk isn't as much so the really, there the should be the conversation of saying 150 metres. Let's be honest about it. It's too, it's too much anyway. You were effectively making hobbyists fly a legal period. There's no argument about it. If you've got 150 metre boundary and you, you're banning people from council land, private land, anywhere that... Before, the, the only land that isn't um, 
congested area, it's going to be the, the fields and the, the council home. You know, here in, in Yorkshire, it's like Ilkley Moor. Now, the council here, thankfully, don't mind. Um, so you go up there, you, you can fly. But, you know, if that were to change in future, you know, that was to go and build a moor and the other places you could fly, there would be nowhere to fly. So you, you effectively, you're saying people are breaking the law, but you're actually making laws that they can't do anything other than break. So... That's the problem. Well, I think I'm going to circle it. All, well, as we always, always end up circling this back round to, it's it's education. Um, it's education and it's education. And by the way, it's education as well. Um, and that's, you know, who's nobody foresee, foresaw this technology rushing out quite so quickly. Um, when I started playing this game, um, you know, there's no way you thought something would come along that would fly seven kilometers and fly very, very well indeed uh, um, with a fantastic camera on board and it would be within something that I could buy. <laughs> well, save a few pennies, but, you know, it's not within the realms of um, possibility to purchase it, purchase C6. So that's the, you know, regulators are on the back foot, but I do worry that this is being forced by a different group of people. It's being forced by politicians who have got their, there are vested interests sitting in the background going, do this, do this, do this, prod, prod, prod. And, it, it, and, and, and the regulators are, the aviation regulators are being left behind. In America, the FAA this week issued a new set of directives for LEOs, law enforcement officers, is that what they call them? I think that's what they call them over there. But they issued a new set of directives and they very clearly say, as soon as a model aircraft is doing X, Y, or Z, it is flying outside of uh, 336 and uh, do something about it. So there's a very clear directive to police officers, uh, to law enforcement in America now, as to what to do. Um, I mean, what but, I, what yeah. I'd like to see with, with drone laws is similar to what we have with cars where there's a law of uh, dangerous driving effectively you have dangerous flying uh, and then you could have a bit more flexibility about it saying if you're doing something that's absolutely um it's doing no harm to anyone you're going out there you, you overfield you're taking a, a picture of the sunset um you know you're not doing any harm but if you're flying beyond uh either line of sight you know you, you're buzzing a, a racer uh, around where there's loads of kids playing or so on, then you can actually be done for it. You know, you actually applying a bit of logic and common sense and risk around it. I, I would like to see one day that we do that rather than just just numbers, just actually coming up with distances. It, it's it's that in itself doesn't put into all the risk or lack of risk that there really is. Well, James, the is, it's, it's, it's pretty subjective because when I was talking with CIA here in New Zealand. And I questioned the need to have a spotter to fly FPV mini quad under the tree canopy. And CAA's response was, but you never know when a helicopter might enter, have problems and need to auto rotate into that area. So like he was, you, know, you can't do it. It's too dangerous because this could happen. What if? And they'll always bring up a what if that will make it dangerous, whatever you're doing, because, you know, it's, it's so subjective that you have to have some sort of at least, you know, guidelines which are absolute. As soon as you go relative, it's he thinks it was okay, he thinks it's not okay, then you've got disagreement and it takes forever to resolve it. But you need parameters and with within which to operate, I think. Um, but again, it's silly just to have hard and fast ones. You know, um, they're just, you know, like sufficient distance to ensure safety is is a good one. If you're auto rotating a helicopter down, I think you have bigger problems than striking a matter. Yes, yes, true. Yeah, it's a fair point. Well said. James Dunthorne uh, meant a good point. Said, when was the last time we saw an RC flyer flying over the city? Which is a fair point. Uh, and then um, there were some other things uh, I saw in there as well. Oh, uh, uh, I'm going to have to say his name. Pudu Jabba. Did he say science data and risk-based regulations? Yes, we know that's not going to exist move away from those thoughts. We don't do logic here. Even though we've got a doctor, a genuine scientist here, we still don't allow logic, science, and real stuff. It can't say like, that is not what I'm Yeah, like, because I did a PhD just in this autonomous system, and there is a lot of science going in this one. Still, the drones that we are using, it's not actually meant for BVLIS mission. Like, uh, we are working on this, robustness and uh, this fault tolerance. There are so many things like scientifically need to be addressed and uh, still we are in that line, like we are doing research, developing some kind of products to 
kind of develop some drones exclusive for uh, baby alloys kind of mission. So it, it will be equipped with this sense and award capabilities and far tolerant what happens if a couple of their actuators are going like uh, crazy in the middle, middle of the air. So all these cases need to be treated. The current drones out of the market, it cannot be used for BV alloys, and that is where most of the problem comes in actually. So if it is out of range, what's going to happen? And GPS is always subject to error, and you can also jam the GPS. So what if there is no GPS or someone is hacking into the GPS? So these are the things that need to be addressed, some kind of cyber security stuff or need to be addressed to make sure the drone is really safe for uh, BV alloys. And, yeah, and there is a lot of signs in this one and yeah. you need to be honest. yeah yeah well but, but i think we, we and i said it i think last week or the week before we're certainly at a point where the the, the industry if you will it can it's very far ahead of the manned industry and, and what it can do if if we've if we made airplanes have adsb we don't need them but if they had adsb it would then become trivial to to keep out of the way of them um and they need never and the idea that we need to tell i, I know people say well I, they'd really like to know if there was a drone in their 12 o'clock low range whatever um they don't need to know <laughs> the arpas gets out the way and they need never know they were there they're already overloaded bless them, the poor kittens having their auto rotation in their helicopter into bruce's field they've got enough to be getting on with they don't need to know bruce is there um it, so this industry, I am get. I know my ranty horse has pulled up. This industry is getting to a point where it's very far ahead of the manned industry, and they've got to start getting out of the way. No GA below two K. They've got to start getting out of the way, and we're going to out technology them fast and out idea them. Um, and it's only the scare tactics that are making things win. The hobbyist, recreational, whatever we want to call it, not traditional RC pilot. Um, I think that 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 problem is is being mitigated by it's not as cool as it was five years ago uh the people that have have them i'll have them and uh it's it's not growing like like they, we know it's not not growing as quickly as we thought so that problem will go away and and it'll be be mitigated i think we've just got to start rebranding ourselves and get into more positive use cases like greg and i'll get off the high horse and let someone else speak now speaking of uh um you know, I know I'm a, a scientist now, but uh, mostly I make YouTube videos in my backyard. Um, but I have a new video, Gary, we can talk about it, but it's coming out uh, tomorrow. It should be approved by uh, law enforcement officials. I've been running it up the flagpole. Um, from the fires, that is like a very good use case from the perspective of law enforcement that I shot the whole time I was when I wasn't managing drone data, I was trying to get GoPros in right positions and things. So uh, it'll come out tomorrow, Gary, and I, we can talk about it. But it will be a good use case of like, look, this is how unmanned pilots and manned pilots can work together in an emergency to produce valuable data and coordinate it and everything would happen safely. And it's, it's one of those cases that we can point to. And so I packaged it in a nice five minute video. So perfect yeah no we need we, we need more of that um the 500 foot rule is not an altitude limit in the uk only applies when flying near people yes uh yes that is that is true um and i have had a meeting on the 13th floor of the civil aviation authority about this very subject and there were no biscuits at the meeting um <laughs> so yes that is that is the case droning on <laughs> you are right <laughs> it's um but the five five hundred foot is is. Let's be realistic. Don't don't we naturally need to free up a little bit more airspace for our PAS, commercial ARPAS operations? Wouldn't it be nice if you could have uh, have up to a thousand feet and then give a five hundred or thousand foot cushion to that manned aircraft? Because really, why is he below two thousand feet anyway, unless taking off or landing? Um, and of course we're, we're making his life safer because if he has an engine failure at 2000 feet he's got further to find for his auto rotation he can he's got higher so he can talk to air traffic for longer and tell them about his problem we're just making it we're just making it safer for them that's what we're saying we're just making it safer for general aviation because we're a loving caring group of people <laughs> uh, so from a commercial operator perspective um, and a mapping perspective so thinking about cameras that are 60 or 80 or, or more megapixels, 
Like that's great, except like I don't really need sub millimeter. I need a map at a thousand feet so I can actually cover a thousand acres um, very quickly. And so having that ability to scale um, commercial drone operations and keeping people out of helicopters and replacing manned aircraft uh, for, you know, that we could do that today if the regulations were more like, okay, I can, I can actually fly at a thousand feet now. Um, that may, way I can map this incredibly quickly and get out of the sky faster, you know? So I think that's, those are the capabilities we need to think about uh, moving on is that Phantom 4 is gonna be replaced with Mavic 2, but Phantom 5 may have a 50 megapixel camera on it or whatever. Um, and that way, you know, it's really going higher uh, and being able to do that safely, which is gonna make a big difference in the industry. Apparently, some people are using fixed wing platforms to map three or four thousand hectares in a flight over a three hour endurance because perhaps that's <laughs> where the money really is. But yeah, there's lots of conversations to be had, and we've got to, as an industry, got to start driving the narrative rather than being told you're dangerous, get out of the way, don't do this, don't do that. It's there's more of us than them, they can get out of the way, <laughs> which is a terrible attitude to have, isn't it? But there we are. So Gary, Sassi and I are going to have to take off here, but thank cool. you very much for having us on, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you all. And you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry we didn't talk to you more. Please please come back again, and um, and we'll, we'll get more input from you. It was great. Thank you very much. And I believe that's either mine or Bruce's name on that check behind you, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see that, mate. I'm just looking hard there. Oh uh, yeah, and the application is open for uh, the Genius 2.0. So if someone interested with cool ideas related to the unmanned system drones, yeah, please do apply to this GeniusNY.com. It really is an incredible opportunity for a startup. Yeah. I mean, the the, the money is great, but some of the more important things that come along with it is the amount of support you get from just setting up a business. There's yes. just so many resources you can take advantage of that really just suck your time away if you're trying to manage a small business from the ground up. Oh yeah, so they have built an ecosystem here. So if you have pretty much everything, that is a very good resource pool. So if you need a pilot, yeah, you can just get it. And if you need some kind of uh, industry expertise and some kind of big uh, exposure to a big larger industry, yes, they will be helping you in all kind of uh, the stream of business, like uh, they'll be connecting you with this big industry and uh, if you need some supplies, if you need some kind of resource, yeah. So pretty much you have a good ecosystem to kind of just start building things and uh, getting your products rolling into the market. So that is really a quick kind of turnaround time with this program. So uh, we are actually enjoying the advantages and benefit of being part of this program. And uh, I would suggest to everybody like who wants to start a drone-based startup with uh, some cool idea, with some innovative products, yeah, they can just jump into uh, this particular program and uh, start up playing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the, the link of the, the submissions and post it on Sewers News. Yes, it's always it's, it's on there quite often. Uh, I'll put it in the uh, comments as well. It's the link uh, to uh, Genius NY, I think, is in the comments already below uh, uh, on this. So, yeah, that million million dollar check can be yours, yeah. dear viewer. Well, thank you, yours, yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I, I must get a big check. I don't know what for, but I'll put it back in. <laughs> I'll do I'll have a big check for something. <laughs> All, right, cheers. Yes. All right, take care, guys. Look after yourselves. Thanks very much for joining us. Cheers, yeah, eh? Cheers, yeah. eh? Bye bye. Have they gone yet? Thank goodness they've gone. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> no, it, uh, yeah, it does look, look like an amazing thing. Looks like New York is, is, is pretty much onto it. Right, oh, well, God, we are late because we had that break, didn't we? Um, I've got a quiz. Oh, oh, you've got a quiz! Hey, hey, bring the quiz! Not today, not today, not today, please. It's oh, it's not a quiz, it's only three bring questions. Bring the quiz, bring the... Oh, it's three questions. Yeah, and it's it's general knowledge, which you've not had before. Just drone general knowledge, just to test you all and see... See... see um, yeah. Kim Kardashian. Is that the first answer? <laughs> yeah. but the first question Eight is... Counts. In 2016... How many hours per month did DJI report drone users were flying? So this is per month worldwide in 2016. So you've got your, I don't know if you can see them here, but either 100,000 hours, 500,000 hours, 1 million hours, or 3 million hours. 
Oh, and we'll throw that to the audience as well. What what do you reckon that is there? Um, wow, Pass. wow, that's that's big numbers. Even the smallest numbers are big number. What was the smallest number uh, again? Is that only from my from 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 my, from my drones? If it's from my my drones, uh, I would say million. Uh, Raz is saying Raz Taz is saying three million. I'm going to go with the lowest number because even that's a big number. Joking, hundred thousand. Yeah. Is any more? Well, in the in the comments, we've got a hundred thousand. What's your thought, to... Bruce? I got no idea, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got. I'll put you all out of your misery. They're claiming at that point that it was actually three million. Wow, three million hours a month. Yeah, yeah. Worldwide in twenty sixteen, and that's a lot of hours, isn't it's it? It's not each, Gary. That's collectively not each. <laughs> I told you, Gary. <laughs> only one million was from me. So, <laughs> right, I've got number two. This is this is a boring one, but I'm just yeah. testing how much you remembered from last time we had a chat. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> what have you got to remember about a week ago? Uh, if the new proposed UK laws, which include the fins and on-the-spot fines, become law, how many years will the government wait before reviewing the outcome? So the options are six months, twelve months, one year, or five years. I say five years. Is it? I think it was five, wasn't it? Yep, yeah, you're both right. You've remembered. Well done. <laughs> right, now, the final question. Now, this is a fun one. And I'm hoping one of you will know this. And it's a good job the uh, US guys are off because they, they might have known this. Um, I don't know Great if you know. But, oh, but yeah. We're we're can, we're can, but, yeah can is on, on, yeah. in the world. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you know, but uh, before it was known in the drone world, uh, Colin Wynn was a bit of a... Uh, reality TV celebrity. Amazing race. It was. Amazing oh, race. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Hey, so you do know. So, so one of you is going to get this. So <laughs> when, when, he, when he was uh, back then, pre-drone days, what was the catchphrase that he was known for? Uh, so this, this is his catchphrase. It was either, my car is broken, you. my donkey is broken, my ox is broken, or my clock is broken. I think it's a don – was it donkey? I, I forget. I forget the uh, what was on the Amazing Race. Go on. Anyone he else? Was, got he was the villain, though. He it's was the villain. It's the sort of thing. It's the sort of thing you wouldn't admit to knowing, isn't it? Yeah, I should have known. I worked for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, you did, didn't you? Nate? Yes, yeah. that's right. Yes, yeah. I should know. I what is this thing called television? Why hasn't told someone told me about this before? <laughs> I forget what was it? my ox is broken. I forget what donkey, the yeah, donkeys, donkeys coming a lot up in the comments yeah, here. It, yeah, it was my ox is broken. So ox ox is broken. after this show, uh, if you if you Google and uh, not Google uh, YouTube, my ox is broken. You can actually watch the video, and I recommend it. <laughs> my ox is broken. I think that's pretty groundbreaking stuff for our hangout. That really is cutting edge. And now we're going to need a flipping catchphrase of our own aren't we <laughs> what's it gonna be what's it gonna be bruce oh i don't know any of these things no, well, no I, idea I'm no ga of 2k is the only one there, there you go <laughs> keeping up well, save us guys save us guys save us guys That's save us guys. guys there's another one oh they're coming in thick and fast now and now you've had quite a bit of good weather over there and i see um old ron's breaking planes left right and center and uh it looks, uh, it looks like you're having a Bruce chain. Yes, thank you there, Pudu Java. That has to be in there as well. Um, what is on your workbench, sir? Oh, when's your not so weekly weekly news happening? You're keeping that frame going. It's just, yeah. <laughs> well, I've actually, um, there've been a few hiccups, but I got some new products to look at, which is quite good. The new, uh, the the revitalization or the rebirth of the run cam three and things. So there's, yeah, there's a few bit, some pieces coming up this week. Uh, lots of whiteboard videos I've done and I'm editing up now. And so, and that you notice in the X jet, the three D rendering of that big jet. Hey, eh? how about that? I eh? did see that. I hangar. did see yeah. that. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought it was a jet flying over the hangar. I, I, yeah, it's I, so real. I'm actually going to apply for grants now because um, I've got the skills needed to. I'll go to that New York crowd and get my million dollars. <clears> there but, you go. Uh, yeah, exciting stuff. The weekend forecast is good as well. So yeah, it should be. Um, things are starting to move now that the weather's warming up. That that um. Uh, radio uh, uh, video was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. I made my 14-year-old watch that. <laughs> That's it. Watch this. Yeah, there's lots more like that coming. They're not particularly 
they don't earn me much money because they're a bit esoteric, but they are good to keep let people know what they're doing and, and inform them of the facts. And there's a the big demand for it amongst the, the subscriber base, but not much outside the subscriber base. So we'll see what happens. Um, as I've got a lot of them that have been edited up and, and are waiting to be seen now. And uh, my final thing for today was while the UK, all the cities are clamping down on drones, Australia is limbering up quite a bit. There was the Brisbane set aside 10 or 12 places where you could fly drones. And now a, a town or city called Jindaloop in Western Australia has announced they want to be a drone friendly city. And they're looking for setting up places where you can fly drones. It looks like if you live in the UK and you want to fly drones, you will have to commit a crime and be transported to Australia. <laughs> well, down on the Dorset, mind. not that anyone would go there much because it's in, in Dorset, but down on the Dorset border, uh, there is a bridge where it still says on the bridge, if you deface this bridge, you will be subject to transportation. And when I was a younger man, I often thought that would be a good way of getting a ticket to Australia, standing there with a hammer and just smacking the bridge and see if they'd send me on. But, you know, it is it is, it is is Dorset, so it's dangerous enough down there. Anyway, lots of uh, comments about uh, what DJI says in their promotional materials coming up in the chat. And, yeah, um what can anyone say oh oh including oh here we go we've got we've got we've <laughs> another porn spammer hooray. it's been a while since we've had one of those hooray. we must have been online long enough so did yeah, anyone ask to the chat room yeah there you go <laughs> just um yes and actually right as much as con drone consumers criticize dgi they always own one Ne nearly always own one you're you're, you're ab absolutely right um but it, regulators i do think need to find a special box for them a special nomenclature whatever that word is it didn't say it right underground deep and well you know it's for, a lot of people are, are being sort of thrown under the bus because of the actions of a okay pretty huge group but uh, it, it's not fair it's not fair and chai comes to tomorrow oh okay Oh, 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 obviously Patrick knows something I don't know yet. Um, but that Chicoms thing is rubbish, Patrick. Nobody believes it. It's fake news. Hashtag fake news. See me comments away. <laughs> yeah, I do for those that don't aren't um, following uh it uh and no, don't worry. <laughs> it always gets too hard. It always gets too hard. All right, so Greg, what's on your workbench or what's happening for you this week as we wrap this one up? Me? Yeah. I am, after doing lots of work for law enforcement for free, I am trying to make some money and Man. sell some plant mapping courses. So if you want to learn how to map plants with drones, please take my course and support my law enforcement adventure. And we'll look out for the video. I'll put a link to your channel uh, below. That's we'll right. look out for your uh, video tomorrow. It should be happens. coming out tomorrow, and I'll, I'll follow up with you shortly over email. Perfect. Uh, Louis, what's happening in your world? Oh, well, you're in Portugal after the... Uh, no, before, the day before off that uh, John landing on the main runway, we had uh, a municipality here that... Um, announced no, with big uh, TV coverage, a drone that could save lives, which was nothing else yeah, than uh, DJI M600 with an um, inflatable life uh, boy that would fly over the beach and drop that, that thing. Curious uh, that that was assigned to a fire department that covered the, the safety of that beach. And the day before, that same fire department caused the fire while testing another drone uh, on an empty field near, nearby. And uh, the, the, the funniest of all is the release mechanism of the inflatable buoy. So they have a string attached to the, the both legs of the drone. So they raise the legs and the string breaks. And the, the, the boy drops. 21st century technology. I actually quite like that solution. That uh, that's actually that makes sense to me. Rather than uh, you know, so the I'll go quick with my quick example from the ballooning world, which I used to be in. Uh, some people, uh, long range balloons, have a little bubble at the top, and then that little bubble at the top there is the valve, uh, which you release gas out of. And one company spent a long time researching a sort of a climate control system for up there because when it gets hot, 
um, it causes all sorts of issues. And another company, the more successful company, just put a solar panel up there. So when the sun comes up, little fan came on, took the heat out. Sun went in, fan went off. You know, <laughs> so it was. I thought that was a much, much better, much, yeah, much better solution. The, the, the breaking string is, is the the best technique solution. And if it works, it will be okay. Now, having an M600 Pro uh, on a beach to do to throw that, I believe I would be safer if they get the the, the fire department another uh, jet ski so they they can can have. Uh, a lifeguard coming to to rescue the people, not not the, the M six hundreds. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll tell you another another string story. <laughs> You're all going to get bored now. So, actually, almost like this thing. There, there used to be in the older ones. There used to be some hooks right at the top, and when you pulled the hooks out, the whole top of the balloon used to come out, and you'd stop very very quickly. And those were tied off, locked off with a bit of cotton so that when you pulled the line you you really knew you, you know you had to pull it and then that would activate it and once upon a time in the Masai Mara in Kenya three of us got airborne and luckily there was a great deal of ground in front of us because all three of us in three different balloons went uh, and uh, and we couldn't we couldn't crack open the valves at the top and what happened was as the crew our crew chief very proudly said afterwards they'd run out of string and they, uh, this honestly happened, like I'm stood on this double-decker bus. They chopped up a mop, and they used a mop head, and they tied off all the things with mop uh, string. So <laughs> none of us could actually... Anyway, anyway, strings and things like that. Um, not drones at all. Training, Jane, there's, there's lots of great comments going on, which I'm roundly ignoring, so I'm sorry about that. Ian, what patio equipment are you making with a new hyper supercomputer? Well, I, all I'm doing at the moment, actually, I'm building a, a new editing rig that I want to be really fast because when you're editing video after it, it takes ages for it to render out. So um, I'm using this is this is the mates I've just been sorted out. So in the back, I've got a nice Lenovo server that I'm building. So it's going to be probably around about 28 calls, and I've got an SSD running in, which is the Samsung Pro in raid zero uh, uh that's half half a terabyte and lots of other stuff going in there so hopefully it's going to be that fast i'm literally going to have to fasten it down to the table where it's going to fly off <laughs> what software are you using ian um, i use um the adobe suite so i use premiere pro and after effects um and it's yeah it, it tends to use more cpu uh than gpu to be honest it's not as efficient as it could be but I kind of like working on it. I'm very used to it now, so that's that's why I stick with that. I, I did have a Mac for a while, uh, but Apple keep being uh, the the approve Nvidia at one point, and then they fall out with them, and then it's uh, ATI and it's back and forth. And because they keep doing that, um, it just keeps messing up which has got the best driver support. So I thought I've had enough of this now. I'm going back to a PC. So that's it. I'm back fully in the. PC world and, and a lot happier for it. So people going about Apple all the time, then they're, 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 they're as big a git as uh, Microsoft have ever been. Um, I've actually even done tutorials on modding an actual power supply in the Mac just so you can put a decent graphic card in it. Well, there you are. And I see Chris is in the uh, comments who thinks you should have some mock based puns. Um, Bruce, um, when when he, when does the flying? You can answer, and if you're still here, Chris, in the comments, when's the flying wardrobe going to fly? The, is, uh, have you not seen the what? thing he's been building? He's he, he's got he's gone to the lumber shop and he's just got like two before. Oh, Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pine is such a very good material for building your frames <laughs> well i'm looking forward to seeing that It'd be tad heavy anyway with that look we are talking nonsense now did anyone else have anything else uh that they saw this week that they want to mention go in once go in twice dear viewers thank you very much wherever you are in the world thank you for hanging in when the power went off here earlier and when the motors arrive says chris um big motors uh <laughs> we'll um we'll yeah, thanks very much. Sorry about the interruption earlier. And I look forward to seeing you all again, 2100 GMT, next weekend. Send that for the win, James, with you all the way. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be dragged into that one again. I know. I think I know what you're referring to. I will not be dragged into that. <laughs> AI or the blockchain all the way. Anyway, good night, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Take care. Have a lovely weekend. Fly safely. Cheers all. Bye-bye.